everyone. Reporting today for Fun Robotics Network, I'm Ab Haas, and with me here is Team 25631, Proxima Nova. They have just one of the most innovative and well-executed outtake systems I've seen this season. I can't wait to jump into it. I've been wanting to talk about it with them pretty much the entire Into the Deep season. Coming up on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Judica Robotics offers durable, polished, and anodized aluminum channels now available in several different color options to customize your robot at studica.com slash robots. No rough edges and a versatile hole pattern allow for positioning at multiple angles. Teams in the U.S., you can request a free sample, apply for team grants, and register for 25% off at studica.com slash robots. Go ad free and access our videos earlier when you support fun with a membership through YouTube Join. For $4.99 a month USD, you can now watch most of our YouTube videos ad-free and gain early access to scheduled content with other options also available. Click the join button below to get started. Okay guys, so when you first saw the game, what were your thoughts on the design? Like why go for this very complicated outtake extension design? Yeah, so it actually started um, like the first week. We knew that we wanted to be able to score um, both samples and specimens using a, some sort of pass-through system so we didn't have to turn. Um, and then through that, it kind of evolved. Um, we had seen in past seasons people using um, horizontal slides on their vertical slides. So we knew that could give us a lot of um, advantage when scoring specimens as we could have more reach while also being able to use the same system to score samples. Um, so after that, it kind of evolved into this we uh, figured out that we wanted to use MGN rails on Mizumi's um, because that gave us the most extension and it also allowed for a lot of flexibility with our transfer system okay. since we could position our claw um, anywhere. Yeah, so let's let's bring the yeah. slides up just a little because I know you have that counter springing and let's walk through the MGN system. So walk me through what your stringing is and why go with this big spool over here. Yeah, so these are um, just continuously strung. So we have the MGNs mounted on the Mizumi's um, and then we just route it through this big pulley here, which is on a Axon Mini, um, through um, this front pulley, um, through the back, and it's basically just a traditional um, continuous stringing. Uh, so nothing, no, no sort of cascade or anything fancy. Um, and we did this for mostly simplicity, but also we found that um, continuous allowed us to use the maximum extension for um, both the Mizumi and Cascade. Since if we were running um, just a Mizumi and a and the MGN on Cascade, we wouldn't be able to use the full stroke length of both of them. Yeah, and I see, is this counter springing over here, or what's the rubber um, band? So for? this is this rubber band just basically pulls back the slide. Since it's continuous, this Mizumi will just go anywhere it wants when this is when the intake is in. So what this does is it makes sure that this is fully bottomed out, um, which makes sure that our when we do our side deposit, it doesn't interfere with our claw. Yeah, I see. We've seen teams with like different latches and locks and stuff before in previous seasons, but this is just a much simpler and lighter way to do that. Very cool. Talking about the poop shoot, as I call it, real quick, this was a recent addition for the World Championship. Is that correct? What was the thinking behind it? Yeah, so um, we after our state championship, we decided to switch from a active intake to a claw. Um, and going from this claw, or going from the active intake to our claw, we didn't have enough time to actually redesign our chassis to work with this side deposit um, where we're able to drop samples. So instead of having to redesign our chassis to be lower to the ground so our turret could turn all the way, we just added this shoot in, which basically allows us to bypass our chassis and drop it straight to the back of the robot. Yeah. Um, and yeah. And can we see a cycle uh, oh, with yeah. that? And while, while we're getting it all set up, Going from the active intake to the claw, what was the decision there? Um, yeah, so at our state championship, we had a lot of issues with intake jamming and overall just oh, and overall just reliability. Um, so we decided to switch to the claw because we thought that it would give us a bigger advantage in autonomous when trying to grab those um, samples. Um, since our vision wasn't um, fully like fleshed out with our active intake, we thought it would just be easier to switch to the claw. We're able to be more precise with grabbing. Yeah, and now talking about the vision with the claw, what changes did you have to make to just make it more consistent and more robust? Um, yeah, so we actually went through a couple of different um, iterations with our vision system. Tony can talk about um, that. Yeah, um, so originally we began with the, you know, the default color pipeline. And um, later on, we moved to OpenCV because that allows us to um, grab the orientation of the sample, which is important for the claw. However, um, we couldn't like really figure out the um, like separate, how to separate the samples, um, so that's why we switched to a neural network um, at last. And by using that, we're able to basically use the aspect ratio to define the necessary rotation of the claw to either to either grab it like this or grab it like this, depending on how much the sample is rotated. 
and we use the top point of the contour to make sure that um, even if we see it partially um, of the sample, we can still like know the position. Yeah, very cool. And uh, with that neural network and the training there, is that something, a model you guys trained yourself or was it just kind of preloaded? Um, yeah, so we actually uh, borrowed the uh, detector from Cuttlefish that they released on okay. Discord, which was really useful. Yeah, very neat. Now, talking about the counterspringing here, uh, I see like with the rubber band, was this a situation where you just countersprung from the beginning or you started with no counterspringing, you're like, okay, this is too slow, we need to add something? Uh, yeah, we knew we wanted to counterspring from the beginning since we're basically at the servo limit. Um, we knew that we could only have one servo on the arm. Um, so since our arm is a little uh, somewhat long, we knew that we would have to counterspring it to make it fast. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and talking about, you, you mentioned you're at the servo limit. Now touching on motors, is it two motors for the intake, one motor for the intake, and then how many for the, for the uh, lift? Um, so originally we had a motor for our active intake, but when we switched to claw, um, we just lost that motor. So we're only running seven motors um, total on the robot. So we have um, one for our horizontal, two for our lift, and then four for our drivetrain. Okay. Very yeah. cool. And then coming back to the hang over here, so that's not motor powered then, it's yes. two servos or what? Yeah, so that's um, two Axon Maxes okay. um, on this spool and it just drives it up continuously. I see. And so that's only for the level two hang then, is that? Yes. Okay. So it was originally designed for level three with uh, in conjunction with these hooks, but um, we had trouble with our PTO, so we weren't able to actually okay. get that level three. I see, I see, that, that's all right. And I want to talk about this wiring uh, system right here. I feel like teams haven't really figured out how to just wire lift super, super solidly. So what can they learn from this Badger tractor system you have here? Um, so we have kind of a combination of an E-chain with just having um, wires in a coil. And uh, we found this to be more reliable and also lower friction. Originally, we used a scissor lift. If you look at some of our old videos, we had like a scissor mechanism. Um, but what we found with this is stuff, it, like it could get stuck a lot. And also it, it uh, added a lot of friction to our slides. So by just using this badger tractor and keeping it super simple, um, just like having it kind of lay on this polycarbonate uh, plate here, we found that it overall just decreased our complexity and um, worked reliably enough. Awesome. Yeah, is this something you see yourself using a lot in future seasons or are there still changes you would want to make to it? Uh, I think we would want to coil our wild, or controller wires a little bit better. Sometimes it can get kind of like all over the place. Um, one issue we had is where it would fall under this polycarbonate um, plate here and then when you pull up you'd get like a snapping sound so um, if we were to redo it we'd probably want to uh, make it a little better controlled. Cool and last question I want to ask you guys is about autonomous. Early season I feel like October, November I just saw a new autonomous from you guys pretty much every week scoring more samples, more specimens. How are you able to so rapidly develop consistent autonomous programs? Um, yeah so I think it starts with our uh, hardware. I think we were able to get a pretty solid design that didn't require super complex pathing, which I think helped a lot with um, being able to develop those autos really fast. Um, and then also, I think our, we developed a pathing algorithm over the summer. So as soon as the season started, we had um, pretty reliable pathing that we were immediately able to start using to get um, those autos. Yeah, and really briefly on that pathing algorithm, what is it, how is it different from, you know, Roadrunner, or Pedro or anything okay. out there? Um, we actually, it's just like standard peer pursuit. Um, with um, just like, you know, look ahead that you can just change throughout every path. Awesome. And that, yeah, that just, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, Proxima Nova, thank you guys so much. You guys just have had an incredible season so far. You know, great showing in Oregon, great showing in Houston. Very, very complex robot, but so well executed. I can't wait to see what you guys bring to next season. Reporting for Fun Robotics Network, I'm Abhas, and this is Team 25631, Proxima Nova. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Judica Robotics offers durable, polished, and anodized aluminum channels now available in several different color options to customize your robot at studica.com slash robots. No rough edges and a versatile hole pattern allow for positioning at multiple angles. Teams in the U.S., you can request a free sample, apply for team grants, and register for 25% off at studica.com slash robots. Go ad free and access our videos earlier when you support fun with a membership through YouTube Join. For $4.99 a month USD, you can now watch most of our YouTube videos ad free and gain early access to scheduled content with other options also available. Click the join button below to get started.